Yesterday, Warren Buffett did an interview on CNBC and discussed his recent investments in five Japanese companies. In the interview, he also discussed how he thinks about investing in general and why he thought these Japanese companies in specific were such attractive investments. We're going to watch this entire clip, then go through the key points so you can better understand Warren Buffett's investment process and become a better investor yourself. So with that being said, let's hop over to YouTube and let's just start this interview. And I will be pausing here and there to provide some additional insight. So let's why just did this right trip it. happen and why did those investments happen to begin with? Well, the investments began maybe close to four years ago, and I was uh, looking at company after company as I do every day. And uh, I just thought these were big companies. They were companies that I generally understood what they did. Some was similar to Berkshire and that they owned lots of different interests, and they were selling at what I thought was a ridiculous price, uh, particularly the price compared to the interest rates prevailing at that time. And, and Okay, so I'm going to stop the video right there really quickly because so far Warren Buffett has already said that these five Japanese companies that he purchased were companies that he understood, so they were within his circle of competence. He thought that they were selling for attractive prices. He basically thinks that they are like Japanese Berkshire Hathaway. So for those of you who do not know, these five Japanese companies are, they, they essentially are conglomerates. They own a bunch of different other companies in Japan. So that's why he's saying that he understood them and they were a lot like Berkshire Hathaway just over in Japan. Then once again, he does say that he thought that they were selling for attractive prices relative to what interest rates were at the time. And he's going to elaborate on that a little bit more here. And uh, so I started buying all five of the uh, the five largest trading uh, uh, companies. And uh, uh, by my 90th birthday, August uh, 30th of uh, uh, 2000, whatever it was. 20, uh, 2020. Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, uh, we had bought just somewhat over 5% of each company, and we were buying identical amounts. So we announced at that time that we bought this 5% interest in each of the five. I wrote a letter to the CEOs of each of the companies saying the same thing, that, that, that uh, we would never buy, Berkshire would never buy uh, more than 9.9% uh, without their consent. That, uh, uh, and that was my word, it was Berkshire Hathaway's word, and, and uh, uh, they all welcomed us in, and their results have exceeded our expectations uh, since we purchased the group. I think I think their dividends, on average, have gone up seventy percent or something like that. And and we now own seven point four percent of each of the companies. And uh, okay, so just to pause quickly again, Warren Buffett basically says that they initially started buying these companies back in August of twenty twenty. I don't know if you guys all remember when that news was circling around, but he did in fact buy these five companies all the way back in 2020. And basically he is saying that the investments in general have far exceeded his and Berkshire's expectations for what they thought would happen over the next just few years. He says in this interview that the dividends on average have already increased by 70% since he purchased them um, just, just a few years ago. So far, these investments have done incredibly well for Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett, and now what they're doing is they're increasing their stake in these five Japanese companies. So they already had a pretty massive position, and now they're simply just adding to it because everything is going well, and again, the investments have exceeded what they were even expecting. So now let's continue on. I just, uh, Greg and I together, we, we wanted to come over and, and, and uh, talk to them, and... Uh... So we got on a NetJets plane and <laughs> plug and, uh, and flew over and we have had a terrific time meeting each of the five sequentially uh, over the last two days and it's been fascinating. And we feel even better about what, but we couldn't feel better about the investment and, and over that time we've sold periodically yen denominated bonds. So more or less, not, we don't do it precisely, but we've 
insulated ourselves from from exchange rate changes. So it's worked out very well so far. But we'll be in these stocks 10, 20 years. I mean, we, 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 we weren't buying with the idea they go next week, next month, next year. But we have had revelations about the, each of the companies that, uh, uh, well, Greg and I are just fascinated by it. Right. Was it worth the trip? Oh, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> it's been a great trip. I mean, like Warren, I mean, they've been exceptional in how they've communicated, both with their performance, but just their approach to business. What did you learn since you've been here? I think the, the thing that stands out very quickly to us is they came to the meetings wanting to build a relationship and strengthen it. So they understand we've invested in their companies. But from the very get-go, when we start the conversations with them, they come each with their own story, and it's around building trust in that relationship with them. Meaning what? That there are other potential deals that you all could do together? We've clearly made it uh, each time we've met with them. We said we very much like the core investment, but to the extent they can identify an incremental opportunity that we could do with any of the five companies, we would... Uh, very much evaluate it quickly and Warren highlighted the bigger the better and that uh, he'll answer the phone on the first ring. And we'll never run out of money. I mean, <laughs> they can call us anytime and uh, it may be that what they have interests us, it may not, but they will, they'll have an answer, you know, bingo. And uh, if we make it. So this is very interesting. So not only did Berkshire Hathaway invest in these five massive Japanese companies, but it seems like these companies are also willing to form a long-term business relationship with Berkshire Hathaway. So basically, if any of these one five, or sorry, if any of these one, yeah, five companies come to Berkshire Hathaway and they're like, hey, we found this nice investment opportunity. Do you guys want to get out on this? Maybe supply some capital and we can acquire this business or expand this business or whatever then now they know that they can go to Berkshire Hathaway for additional capital to pursue any investment that they want. Now, why this is so interesting to me is because this is a lot like what Brookfield does, Brookfield Asset Management. They raise a ton of capital, literally tens of billions of dollars, well, actually like $100 billion last year, and they essentially invest all of that capital alongside their own capital. So they raise a bunch of money from their partners, other investors and whatever, and then they take that large basket of funds and then they start investing it alongside their own profits and capital. And now it looks like Brookfield, or sorry, uh, Berkshire, kind of similar names. Now it looks like Berkshire may be getting into some similar things where they may start investing their cash alongside other companies and other investors. Yeah, so, deal the money will be on the way and, and we look forward to it. And, and uh, I'm just astounded at how they really, they're all different and they're all the same at the same time. I mean, we learned about five different individual companies, but we, it, it was not what, exactly what we expected. It was better than we expected yeah. in every respect. People look at this and say, okay, uh, Warren Buffett is putting his stamp of approval on investing in, in Japan, basically. Is that an accurate read? Well, it was, yeah, it was an accurate read, but it was an accurate read a, a couple of years ago, too. I mean, it, it I was confounded by the fact that we could buy into these companies and in effect have an earnings yield of maybe 14% or something like that with dividends that would grow. They actually grew 70% during that time. And, uh, and the people were investing their money at a quarter of a percent or nothing. And, uh, and that quarter percent, if they put it out for many years wasn't going to grow and the 14 percent was more likely to grow than not and uh okay so that is pretty much the end of the interview and the end of the segment that i wanted to show you all so warren buffett at the end of the interview one says that he has given his stamp of approval on investing in japan over the past two years really and he's giving it again I think that's why a lot of investors are really focusing on Japan now and why a lot of these Japanese stocks have been rallying since Warren Buffett flew to Tokyo and increased his investments in these companies. What's also interesting is Japan, the overall market's price to earnings ratio, it is selling slightly below average. I actually have a screenshot here from JP Morgan. They put out their guide to the markets every once in a while. And this screenshot right here 
shows us that Japan is currently trading for a price to earnings ratio of about 13 and its 25 year average has been up here around 20. So Japanese stocks are looking quite cheap right now relative to their 25 year average. Honestly, quite significantly cheaper. It's about a 40% discount to their 25 year average. So Japan looks like it does have some deals in the market right now, according to this research by JP Morgan. Now, what's also interesting is Warren Buffett discusses the earnings yield that he was getting on these investments. And he said that between these five conglomerates, that he was getting about a 14% earnings yield, which was especially attractive when bonds were only yielding about 0.25%, I believe he said. So what Warren Buffett is telling us here is that he compares his investment opportunities versus what interest rates are currently doing or what bond yields are offering. Bond yields or the 10-year bond is typically seen as the risk-free rate. It's the return that investors can get for taking essentially zero risk. So if the 10-year bond and bond yields are at, you know, like 0% or 1%, then investors are not getting that much of a return for taking zero risk. So what they have to do is go and find other investment opportunities like stocks, real estate, and really any other investment opportunity. Whereas, think about it, if bonds were yielding 20%, then any stock or any business that is not giving you a 20% return does not look nearly as attractive as just buying a risk-free government bond. So this is one thing that every single legendary investor does, and I'm happy to hear that Warren Buffett discussed this in this video, because they always, always, always compare the earnings yield or the free cash flow yield of the stock they're buying versus the yield on bonds. Now, again, in this interview, Warren Buffett says that these Japanese stocks had on, on average about a 14% earnings yield. So when he's comparing a 14% earnings yield versus a 0.25% bond yield, obviously the Japanese stocks looked much more attractive. And a 14% earnings yield on cost is pretty incredible. The earnings yield, for those of you who may not know, is essentially just how much cash the business could return to you as the investor in earnings relative to the price you're paying for it. Now, I actually went over to Stock Unlock here, and we're going to be taking a look at this business. Um, this is one of the ones that Warren Buffett actually purchased. Which one is this? This one is Mitsu & Co. And again, this is one of the ones that Warren Buffett purchased. Now, if we go over to the earnings yield and we take a look at around August of 2020, we can see that the earnings yield was that 14-ish percent. So this is right where Warren Buffett was buying it. Now, we can see the earnings yield also went down, but then it started rallying back up because the company's earnings have grown over the past three years quite substantially. And now the company has a 19% earnings yield. So basically, this company could return nearly 20% to their shareholders on its price today from the organic earnings that the business is generating. He was looking at this number right here and he said, you know what, this company looks like it is ridiculously cheap, especially with the low interest rate environment and the low return environment that we are currently in. Additionally, he also said that he understood these investments and they were within his circle of competence. So he basically saw a really cheap stock that was giving a high return relative to bonds and he understood it. Then Warren Buffett also said that he plans on holding these investments for the next 10 to 20 years, which most likely means that he thinks that they're either going to be fine or even grow over the next 10 to 20 years. Now, another thing that he was talking about was the company's dividend per share. So right here, we can see in 2020, this company, Mitsu, was producing about 80 yen um, in a forward dividends per shares. It is now up to about 130 which means that the dividend has almost doubled. It's up about 70%. So the dividends are growing nicely. And what this means is that Warren Buffett's dividend yield on cost when he purchased the stock back in August of 2020 is now around 8.6%. This is why investors love dividend growth businesses. Because yes, he bought the stock at a dividend yield. Let's take a look at a dividend yield of roughly, you know, 4%, maybe 4.5%. But as the company continues growing its dividends, what that means is his dividend yield on cost continues increasing and increasing, and it should over time if the business's fundamentals do end up continuing to grow over the long term. So yeah, the company has, you know, a 3.4% dividend today, but Warren Buffett, based on the share price he bought it at, now has about an 8.5% dividend yield, which is very strong, especially in just three years. Now, we're going to do the exact same thing with this business, 
just with the earnings yield. So we saw that Warren Buffett was buying this business at an earnings yield of about 14%, right? However, the company has grown its earnings quite dramatically over the past three years. So what is Warren Buffett's earnings yield on cost of this investment now? Well, let's go and take a look at the stock back here in about August of 2020. And Warren Buffett now has an earnings yield on cost above 30%. So based on where Warren Buffett purchased the stock, he now has an over 30% earnings yield. So if the company wanted to pay out all of its earnings, he would be getting over a 30% return on the, the price that he purchased the business at. So these have been incredibly successful investments for Warren Buffett. He is very bullish on Japan. It looks like Japan has some undervalued stocks right now based on what we saw in the JP Morgan report. He understands these businesses and he wants to hold them for the long term. Now, just looking at this one stock as well, if we go into 2020 and take a look at August, we can see here that Warren Buffett was most likely purchasing around here. This stock is now up over 134%. So it's more than doubled. He's getting a massive dividends on that position now. And uh, Berkshire Hathaway looks like it continues to buy these Japanese trading companies, the top five that he was talking about. So it's pretty easy to see why he is so interested in these businesses. You know, if this company can continue to produce the amount of earnings that it's generating right now over the long term, it still has that 20% earnings yield right now today, which is incredibly attractive. And uh, he's probably using the exact same thinking that he was when he initially bought back in 2020. I mean, think about it. Bond yields have gone up to about 5% now. I believe that's what investors can get around there. And uh, this company is still generating that 20% earnings yield. So when he's taking a look at this business versus what he can get in bonds, He's seeing a 20% return on this business versus a 5% return on bonds, which means that he's getting a much higher return by buying these Japanese trading companies than he would if he would simply just put that money in bonds. So these companies look like they're a lot more attractive than a bond right now, just based on their current earnings. And if they continue to grow over the long term, then that earnings yield is only going to continue. So, <clears throat> so basically, Japan looks like it is quite attractive to invest in right now. Looks like there could be some value over there, especially with that JP Morgan report that we saw. Japan is trading about 40 to 50 percent below its 25 year average price to earnings ratio. And the businesses look like they're doing OK, at least. So yeah, it looks like there could be some value over there. And I am going to be writing a stock unlock newsletter that I will be sending out tomorrow morning. And we are going to be covering some Japanese investments and going into more depth on why investors are so interested in Japan, because Warren Buffett is not the only one buying Japanese stocks right now. So if you're interested in getting that newsletter, in the newsletter, I'm also going to share a watch list that I made here on Stock Unlock. I used our screener and I found a bunch of different Japanese stocks that look like they could be quite attractive. And uh, yeah, I just made a watch list and I'm going to put that watch list in the newsletter tomorrow. So if you guys are interested in getting that newsletter, it is 100% free and you can go and sign up at StockUnlock.com. Just enter in your email. That's all you need to do. And then you will receive the free newsletter tomorrow morning. But yeah. That is basically my review of this clip of Warren Buffett and his Japanese investments. I thought that it was quite interesting. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, as always, please remember to leave a like on it. If you found it helpful, let me know. If you have any feedback, let me know. You guys know all the good stuff. And uh, I'm happy to be back. Thank you guys so much for watching. I truly do appreciate it. And I really hope to see you all again in my next video.